All right, guys, what we're going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and turn another of my internal bars for the shaper. And I'm going to use this piece of material right here. This is a drop or a scrap out of a piece of 4140 that was already used for something else. It had some threads there that were cut off. And I already uh, faced it and did a rough turn on it and then faced this in and centered that in too. So this was the length of the piece right here. So I just cleaned up the saw cuts is all I did. And we're, since I had, I had a lot of guys that was like, um, they were wanting to see me use the new six jaw chuck to turn that other uh, boring bar or the internal bar. So we're gonna use the new TMX six jaw to turn this. All right, and I wanna point out that I've already got this made right here, you know, the new nut, but I've also got a second nut made. So we now have two matching nuts. <laughs> and so we're just gonna go ahead and thread it to one of these. I just thought I'd point that out. I did this before, just now and got it finished up, but I've already filmed one, so that's why I didn't film the second one. So now we got two brand new hex nuts for our internal bars, just because, you know? So what we're gonna start with is my chuck stop right here this is the edge technology chuck stop and this is the largest parallel that they have it's one and five eighths tall and i'm going to use this so i don't i haven't tested this out on how strong it is for pushback and that's the problem i've always had with scroll chucks with holding say chrome plated rod for hydraulic cylinders at work is uh, the three jaw chucks you know if you try to hold that in a three jaw chuck with the chrome plating and you're trying to turn it's actually pushing back in that chuck and that's one of the things I've never liked about a scroll chuck. That's why I like a four jaw because it holds it. This should this should have a little bit more holding power than the three. But what we're going to use is the stop behind it here. By the way, it's got the magnets here that stick to the face of the chuck. This is a centering ring just to keeps it in the very middle. And then this is going to be your stop edge right there. All right, so stick it up in there just like that. And I haven't done any adjusting on this chuck since the first time you see me that that first initial video. So I want to see what kind of run out we get. You know, this is a this is a nice turned area that's just nice and true. All right, but now we have a stop that this shaft is going to be pushing against. Let me go ahead and get the center in there. And now whenever we're we're turning it, I don't have to worry about this pushing back and then slipping off of the center. All right, so we got our live center in this end. And let me go ahead and I'm gonna snug this up. This one has the zero, but I'm gonna go around to all three and tighten up those pinions. Make sure they're good and tight. Just wanna see how close it's gonna be running to zero. less than a thousandths very good all right so with those stops in there these parallels that gives me seven sixteenths uh, area that it's holding right there which is actually right at what I want for the a flange so I'm just I'm not going to run it that close up to the jaw I'm just going to go ahead and line that up let's say that's five eighths right there all right so that gives me a little bit of room between the jaws That'll be my stop point, and then once I'm through doing the turning, we'll face the back of that off just like we did the first bar. We'll go ahead. That's our little witness mark right there. I got a zero. Okay. I might have jumped into this without telling why I'm going to do this other bar. I talked about in the first video that I wanted to have different length bars, and that's what this is going to be a shorter. This is going to be a shorter bar for doing. Uh, smaller work pieces so I actually have a shaft a shaft hub uh, one of those gear hubs that I need to put an internal keyway in and the shaper was what I wanted to try to use to put that keyway in there it's going to be a 22 millimeter wide keyway and I don't have a brooch for it so I thought I'd try it on the shaper but I wanted to go ahead and make the shorter throw bar instead of having the 12 inch we'll go ahead and just make the short one so that's why I'm uh, go ahead and get this done. I'm, I want to try to get this bar done before we move on to the shaper to uh, start doing the internal keyway cutting. 
All right, so that's two and three quarter now, and we want to take it down to two and a quarter, so we got a half inch to come off there. All right, let's see what this lathe will do. We're going to run 370, and we've got a 10,000 speed rate going right there. We're going to, so this, this lathe can't handle the, the type of cuts like the Monarch can. It just doesn't have the rigidity or the, or the power. So I'm not going to be trying to overdo it over here. Just take a, a comfortable pass. This is an eighth. Let's see what it looks like. Let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to go to 200 right there. Let's see what it does. particularly like those kind of chips that pop like that but I mean it's doing a good job and it's doing what we wanted to do so I'm just gonna roll with it that that insert that's a 431 so it's got a pretty tight radius which is what I like one eighth on the dial is, is a pretty good pass if you're not having to take a lot of metal it just seems to be a good amount of metal removal to, to make a chip roll over and go straight down pass I've got my witness line right there this is going to be the the bar section that's going to be two and one eight diameter and this section back there is the larger two and a quarter I have taken larger cuts than that on this machine before but that's this is real close to what I feel comfortable taking you know you might take a 250 cut and it really just depends on what the material is but something like this is the 4140 that's heat treated about a quarter inch is kind of going to be my limit on it i'm going to go ahead and finish this section out this uh, this area of the bar right here we'll go ahead and get some Finishing cuts done on it. Let's see where I'm at. I should be right at my two and one eight. And that smoke is just all the cutting all down there on them other chips. Okay. Very good, man. I'm not. Let me check that again. It's fast. I'm seeing what the taper is that I'm cutting. I got that thing dialed in just as straight as an arrow. There's there's like no taper in this right there. I didn't read the tenth, but there's gotta be no more than a tenth in that reading right there. That's what I'm hunting for right there. When it curls that chip and, and falls over to the left side and pops off, that's a good chip for finishing anyway. Now we're running a we're still running ten thousand speed rate right here, by the way. Thank you. 
it's nice and straight man I'm loving the way that's that's cutting there okay so this this is finished here now I'm gonna go ahead and just get this finished out two and a quarter and then I'll bring you back whenever we do our uh, threading there See if I can get you a little bit of the uh, hand wheel action here. We've already got the cross slide set to zero. Now I'm going to touch the compound off and zero it out. This is 350 RPM is what I'm running. Cutting a 12 pitch thread, 12 threads per inch. And I can hit any line on the, the uh, threading dial over here, it doesn't matter. I'm just going to line up on any line just because I just feel it's a good habit to uh, look at a line and visually engage it instead of just throwing it in wherever. So I got my leaf out for 12 threads and we are there. So let's go ahead and that's gonna be around 65 thousandths deep on this compound right here. I'll do my first two cuts at like 20 thou. get a, a better surface finish if you do it faster than uh, doing it at granny low speed. I'll get me, I'll get it real close and then we'll check it. Let's go to 60 right there. It's getting real close. Let me hit it with a file. Let me find my file. Just want to knock the burrs off the threads is what I'm doing. Last threads rolled over there, so I'm going to straighten it up. Okay. I'll do is uh, I'm going to take that out because that'll line back up. And we're just going to manually fit it, so it's 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 almost there. It's starting to get tight. That's what we want. It's a good fit right there. All right. We're going to call that one done. Just going to do some more filing and, and polishing to make sure that all the burrs are gone and that we pretty it up, make sure it looks nice and polished. I never did chamfer that, but it's so close I'm not going to be able to do it. So I'll do that once I flip it around. All right. So see, that's nice and polished up. That's a turn finish and then just brightened up with the gray scotch bright. You can still see the little scratches from the, the chips in there. So we'll flip it around and get it faced out. Still pretty warm.
I just want to take the opportunity to look and see what the runout is showing. Let's just check it right there. I'd call that a thousands, thousands run out. So what's really cool is that we could, we can readjust this uh, backing plate if we wanted to, to get that little bit of run out out of there. Very neat. So we're at five eighths on that thickness now and I'm gonna take it down to a three eighths. Last stop, get some chamfers on it. Just break this other side. And that's it. Nothing left to do but get it out of here and clean the lathe up. As far as the lathe work anyway. And a little toasty. See nice good contact there from the chuck. All right, there we go. All right, we made it back out here the next day and I'm gonna go ahead and get the pilot hole drilled for the square brooch and get the set screw hole drilled and tapped as well. And then we'll go to the press and go ahead and press the square brooch through there. I'm going to use the same technique as I did on the last one where I'm going to come down here and scribe me some lines. Alright, and we'll come over here to about 248. Let's bring it down where it touches. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get our square brooch started in the hole again, like last time. Just using this copper hammer to tap it in. I think that's going to work right there. Looks pretty nice and square to me. All right, time to go to the press now. Well, I hope this is going to end up being a better setup for broaching this uh, square broach here since I've got some better support for this V-block. And setting it up, you know, it kind of occurred to me these are some really old V blocks and truth be told these were probably bought at uh, Navy surplus by my granddad and this doesn't tell how old these blocks are but they, there's a lot of drilled places down in the center of this V right here where they were probably used on some kind of drill press machine so it got it, it occurred to me that what would really be nice is to have these one of them with a hole drilled down in the center of this V block or somewhere in there for the cutter like this to pass through. So that's something I'm gonna keep in mind. I really don't wanna drill these, but maybe I can uh, score some other ones, some little cheapos, and uh, put me a nice hole in the center of it to clear a broach. That way it's supported directly in the middle of the V-block because it just looks like it's gonna work. So let's go ahead and get cranking on. I'm gonna put some more, get some more oil going here. Keep it wet, keep it lubed up there. We can get this sucker started. So far, so good.
if you're going there with my triangle and uh, square files right here, I got it kind of filed out so that this particular tool bit has a good fit through there. It's a little bit snug one way, but we got it. We got it where it'll fit now. So I'm going to leave it just like that. So I spoke with Dana McAllister and Bill Ashcraft over at Five Star Machine because uh, Bill is where I got this design from doing this bar like this. He, he did this on his step toe shaper. So I asked him if they could give me some advice on how he cuts his internal keys and this is what he showed me. He even drew a nice diagram. So he roughs it out with a tool that looks just like an Acme thread tool. That's what he called it, was an Acme tool. You go in there and you rough it out, plunge and go side to side to kind of rough out the shape of the, of the slot you want. And keep in mind, you usually, you have the keyway laid out on the end of it so you can see where the keyway is supposed to be. All right, once you have it roughed out, then you have a tool like this. This is exactly like Bill's, the grooving tool. And you go in there and you use this tool to cut the sides to the width and then you go across the bottom of the keyway you know you feed across to clean it up and he gave me this profile that he uses too and I didn't even think about that you've got a relieved area in the center he called this a fishtail and you've got a relieved area so you've got two points of contact there on the end of your tool so that whenever you're coming across there you're actually cleaning up the tool marks as you go across so this is my very first grinds here. And I did have, I cut this one with these two tools yesterday and it worked out pretty good. So now that we've got the bar modified, I'm gonna try it again. We're gonna cut another slot in this just for practice. I'm not, sh I'm not uh, shooting for any specific size other than just wanting to see how the tools react and see how this bar is working finally. Let's go ahead and scratch just a couple lines on here and see if we can do a little bit better. I want to use the automatic down feed. I got it set at four thousandths. Just testing the waters here. I know the nose of that tool looked nice and square on the on that workpiece there. Getting to be a little too heavy for that tool to cut on all three sides there. Wanting to kind of dig in, so we're gonna go, let's go to the side, see what it does. I'm going to clean up the sides with that straight tool now. What I'm doing is I'm waiting for it to touch. I'm going to disengage that feed. It should be right about now. Right there. Okay, that's the bottom. the bottom right there. So 
there's our tool cleaning up the bottom of the slot now I went and grabbed a 5 8 tool bit out of my drawer look at that my first successful slot in the shaper that's pretty cool The more that I practice this stuff, the more feel that I have and the more experience I get so that I can actually utilize these practice cuts with uh, real jobs and real techniques for other projects that we do. Well, I'm happy with the results that I'm getting now and uh, thanks a lot Bill and Dana for helping me with some of the tips on the, uh, the tools and how you guys use your shaper there. So from here I'm going to break this setup down and I'm going to set up the other big Kurt vise that I have on the side of the table, I'm going to rotate this thing around because I want to I want to get set up and start working on the uh, coupling that I have, and I cannot position it in this vise and be able to have reach for the for the uh, the bar right here. So I, I actually have to bring it back further onto the table, and if I try to swing this around, the the screw hits the ways right here, so I can't turn the vise around all the way. So anyway, that's going to be the next project that I've got going on, and uh, we're going to get started on that next, okay?